Recently, the Department of State Security Services, DSS, raised an alarm over suspected plans by some elements working with external forces to incite religious violence in states across the country, such as Sakoto, Kanu, Kaduna, Plateau, Rivas, or your Lagos, and some states in the southeast. In response to this, the Christian Association of Nigeria, CAN, alleged that the alarm raised by the DSS was an artificial creation aimed at causing fear and panic among people. They also expressed that they perceived it as a ploy to stop some clerics from expressing their views on the state of the nation. Now, to discuss this conversation uh, this evening, I have Dennis Amakri, former assistant director of the DSS. And of course, we're also being joined by Reverend Joseph Hayab, he is the Christian Association of Nigeria president in Kanu. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us. We appreciate it. Thank you. All right, I'm going to start with you, Mr. Dennis Amakri, because uh, your former people um, raised this alarm, obviously, um, warning that people do not um, whip up sentiments that could cause um, disorder, that could cause um, you know, uh, this unity in the country. Uh, I'm wondering to myself, there have been so many allegations of, you know, this about to happen, that is about to happen. And for some people, the intelligence agency in this country collects intelligence, not necessarily raising alarms that could cause or send fear to the hearts of people. Who signed off on this warning that was put out? And why did you think it was a good strategy? Well, intelligence agencies the world over do operate this way. They gather intelligence, and when they get certain alerts, then they inform the public, or they inform the particular sector that is concerned. For instance, in this particular case now, uh, it's just like the word in alert, when um, you have uh, even foreign embassies do it. When there is going to be a problem, if uh, our, our elections, for instance, have been known to be very violent, all the embassies will send out alerts to all their indigents that you can travel out of the country or you can stay where you are, but be very, very careful because there is possibility of violence. It's an intelligence report that is given to people now, when the intelligence agencies do that, that is for public. There are two, two stages of it. One is for public, one is specifically for those people who are targeted. Because if they find out that these are the people perpetrating it, what they do is to go for them or watch them. They can put them on surveillance, and then, of course, by the time they will create that problem, they are preempted, and that's how it works. Okay, all the world over. Let me let me butt in there. You you just told us about advisories that are put out by embassies, and advisory is totally different from what the DSS put out. The DSS is saying there are people who want to make trouble. Uh, there are people who are trying to dis, uh, you know disunite the nation. That's different from an advisory that oh, there's Boko Haram in the northeast. If you're traveling to the northeast, or there's going to be elections in river states and the elections in river states are always violent so if you live around there or you walk around there be careful that's an advisory it's totally different from saying there are people who are going to make trouble if you are the dss no, you should oh, hold on that hold on i'm, I'm trying different. to make i'm trying to see i'm trying to make a distinction yeah. here you because of what you you i mean right. you you put that out you're saying this is what embassies do but what you did was say this is what is going to happen. There are people who are going to come under the guise of religion to cause trouble. Now, if you do know these people, why do you not go straight to these people, arrest them or question them, instead of having to come out to the public to put out these statements? Of course, people will start wondering who's going to cause trouble. And so there's room for all kinds of speculations. Why do you not go straight to do that instead of putting okay. out that? An advisory is totally different from what you just put out, sir. In case I'm wrong, please correct me. Well, advisory 
alerts, warnings, they are all the same. But it depends, like you said, there are some that are preemptive and some are just to inform the public. Uh, uh, right now, the SSS have come out to tell you that there are some people that are trying to use religion to foment trouble. If I can just recycle right now, review what you have done, uh, what is happening in the United States right now, there is an alert by the FBI that there are armed groups that are going to attack in 50 states of the United States if Donald Trump is not inaugurated. And that alert is out right now. Now, they don't go around and start harassing people. They might either put them on surveillance, they might either watch them, and if they actually see them in the act, then they will be arrested. Because we're in a democracy. It is these same people that will tell you that, oh, they are just coming to arrest us. We've not done anything, okay? Because one thing people don't understand is that when they enjoy peace in a country, the security agencies are working. For somebody to say that the security agencies are raising a lot of fear or panic, I think it just shows signs of ignorance of what the security agencies Talking do. about raising panic, and that, that's where we have uh, Reverend Hayab. Reverend uh, Joseph Hayab is the CAN president in Kaduna State. Uh, Reverend Hayab, you're the one who spoke uh, on behalf of CAN um, reacting to this message put out by the DSS saying that they're causing fear. And, and you did not just refer to this one um, statement by the, by the DSS. You have made reference to other statements that are similar. And for you, you feel like it's causing fear and panic unnecessarily. Um, why do you think so? Why do you think the DSS has to do this? Thank you very much. I've listened attentively to the effort by our, my senior my father, by, by his age, I believe. Uh, we've lived in this country for long. We've followed the activities of the state security service, even during the days of the NSO. We know how operations are done, but this kind of new pattern of public statement is a little bit different from what you are trying to project or you are, you are trying to uh, convince us to see that is the same. It's not the same. The fact about it is that we've had crisis, like me coming from Kaduna, we've had crisis. People have lived in their home and they were attacked, killed. Oh, what exactly did the security agents do? Uh, people didn't know anything happening and their homes were burned. Uh, hoodlums or criminals or bandits came and destroyed a whole village. Uh, what exactly did we do? Uh, People have already developed fear and uncertainty in their minds. And what keeps happening is that every time we just hear this is coming with a press statement, as if the work is about press statement, it's not about silent investigation, it's not about going out there to find concrete evidence to show that some people are out as enemies of Nigeria. It's not about going after them, not to even allow them to complete their plan. It's just about giving people information. You see, when you want to give me such information, I must also reflect and see, before now, what did you do in situations like this, or even situations that were openly violent? What exactly did you do? Uh, if you think we're ignorant, I'm not sure we're ignorant because we we also uh, follow the patterns of work. DSS shouldn't become another. You see, there's something going on in Nigerian social media. This same press release by DSS, give it another six months, give it another eight months, if you are patient enough, give it another 12 months, you will find another person repeating and circulating this kind of story out there. This is what is happening. So we felt this is, shouldn't just join the ban of those who just make statements. Statement is not what Nigerians want. What Nigerians really want now is that if there are enemies of Nigeria, and according to your statement, if you know about them, discourse them. Stop them from operating. But every day you are telling us there's going to be tension. And when there was real tension, there was nothing that happened. You just keep on on of fear. put fear on us every day, every day, every day. We love your work and we've been supportive of the work. But I think that when the work is beginning to become more of a, a media work, not an action work, uh, we have also the role as citizens, as people who want to see you do the best, to remind you that no, wait a minute. This a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot every day isn't really the work we know you to do. And when you were not doing a lot, you were actually doing because we know the kind of capacity you have. But because we've okay. it to be this a lot thing, we are not using that your capacity to prevent crisis, to prevent crime. But this is just making it a media statement. 
before Mr. Macri responds to you, I, I want to come in there. There have been, and in, not in any way trying to attack you, but there have been several religious leaders who have made very sensitive statements that also could be capable of, you know, causing some form of havoc, permit me to say. Um, and some of them, you know, wield some power in terms of their congregations. So they have a huge following. And, and do you think that maybe this could also be part of the reason why the DSS put out this warning saying, just in case somebody's thinking about doing this, do not do it. Maybe, just maybe this could be the reason. And let's not also forget. I, I, I do understand. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I, I, it's a question. I do understand. What just, just also yeah, recently, it, 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 Reverend Kuka has... by religious leaders, whether from whatever angle. If the statement is inciting, security have always have a way. And we also have laws in states and in this land that treat people who make statements that are inciting. Have we evoked that? Have we evoked that? Or we just now put an ignorant Nigeria who really do not even, is struggling to earn a living, is struggling to find a source of livelihood. We put him into the fear and confusion every day with statements that we ourselves know that what we're supposed to do is act. We know DSS to be a very active, intelligent gathering organization, and we know the difference and the role the police play in such things. But of recent, we've turned it to be more about the DSS becoming more, you see, we don't want to, I don't want to use this term to begin to remind us, DSS, where some of these things started. But I, I believe strongly that not many Nigerians are happy with these kind of statements coming from the DSS. What Nigerians want is, if you are gathering intelligence, go after those who you believe have, you have enough credible intelligence to show that what they are planning is evil, dislodge them, stop them from doing. Nigerians will just be commending and praying and wishing you well. We're coming up. Before Christmas, there was also another one. Some few months ago, there was also another one. Have we turned to be statements uh, first? You are too good for that. We know what you can do. When your men are out to protect, when your men are out to get information, when your men are out to really ensure that evil do not happen in our life, we know what they can do. But when we now begin to allow these issues of issuing of statement becomes the order of the day, then it becomes no longer the DSS we know, sir. Mr. Macri, would you like to respond before I go back to my quest next question? <laughs> well, <laughs> I think uh, I think the Reverend Gentleman wants to be the Director General of the SSS, where he will direct them on what to do and not what not to do. Uh, apparently, does not know the inner workings of the organization. The Nelson he was referring to, I was recruited as an Nelson uh, officer, where we later changed to SSS. That's and right. we know how things have changed. Things have changed. Believe it or not, things have changed. Before we don't even have a a public relations or press spokesperson. But now we do. And because of the recent times, there is need to inform people. There is social media going on. You cannot keep your mouth shut when things are going on in the social media, which could be misleading. So there is need for the DSS to come out today and say, look, be careful about this. I don't see any reason, anything wrong about that. If somebody is going to tell you that, look, don't follow this road because there's something going to happen in the road there. And you're telling me, don't tell me. Go and stop the thing that is so, happening so Mr. on the Macri, road before you quick, come and tell me. Quickly because no, we, that's because, not how it works. Quickly, you know, because we're, think because we're running out of time, of, Mr. Macri, uh, uh, quickly, quickly before we wrap up. You're saying that the DSS's job is to warn us now, and this is a new strategy of sorts because you're saying things have changed. But is this the best line of action, issuing statements, because I'm thinking this is also what he's dragging you about. Is this the best line of action? Because you're, asked, you're saying that, um, that something is happening on social media. Is that the job of the DSS? We have the Minister, Ministry of Information and Culture. They're supposed to be the ones who are correcting or changing narratives to try as much as possible to keep us united. <laughs> Should that be the job of the DSS again? No, no, no. Is no, this no. not, you know, a square peg in a round hole? Quickly, in one sentence. Uh, no, not in one sentence. You cannot tell me that the DSS, as an intelligence organization, let me tell you, there is what we call open source information, open source intelligence. 
And there are many things happening in the social My media. My question is simple, Mr. The Macri. Is this the uses. best line of action? Okay. Looking around you, Nigeria is some form, I mean, this we were more like a boiling pot of hot water. Is this the best line of action? Because everybody has to do yeah. whatever they're doing has to be in the best interest of the nation. And the people that we're talking about here are our people. Is this the best line of action going forward? One, These statements one issuing. One thing that we have to understand is that we are in the information age. And the DSS is not wrong in informing people about potential threats that are facing the country. They will continue to do that. That's for the general public. At the same time, they go specifically to those areas where those threats have come out okay. and then keep those things in the board. That's okay. how it works. And finally, quickly, um, um, Reverend Hayab, quickly, um, what do you have to say in response to that going forward? Is this what we need? Um, well, could there be a better way to go about it? Quickly. Well, this is where some of those who have been privileged to serve us get it wrong. You are in DSS, but you don't have monopoly of ideas of everything. You work with us to get information. You work with us to nip crime in the board. We, you need us as we need you. But when we begin to tell you some of the things you don't do right and you think we need your office, then you are getting it wrong. Nobody needs your office. What we want is that you do it as an organization that is right. I'm just happy with some of the questions told to you that you do not clearly want to answer them. Is it the new pattern? Is it the way you want to do it? Don't you have the National Orientation Agency? Don't you have other agencies that are supposed to address issues among people? Do you now begin to do this job of another media thing? Because the more you go to media, the more okay. you create more right. e uh, different thank you versions very much. of Gentlemen, the story. Gentlemen, so we're, we're out of time, unfortunately. Thank you, Reverend Joseph Hayab is the CAN president in Kaduna State. Also, Mr. Dennis Amakri is a former DSS agent and he's a security consultant. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for giving us your time on this particular issue thank you all right thank you for joining Bye. us we'll take a quick break and when we return i'll be giving you my take in just a moment well here's my take 20 plus years of democracy yet we cannot have free fair and credible elections devoid of violence and bloodshed the drag between the APC and the PDP in River State definitely has to stop. Politicians have to stop the blame game and begin to prioritize us, the people, because that's why they're there. They are supposed to serve us. Enough of these distractions. We cannot continue like this forever, can we? Now, why are we whipping up unnecessary sentiments in, in terms of, uh, instead of beefing up security and guarding against issues and circumstances that could lead to it? Instead of raising unnecessary alarms and pointing fingers, there's work to be done in Nigeria. At this point, we need to work to heal and foster unity and not feed the flames of disunity. This is what we desire, and that's what we must do. I am Mariana Kuhn, thanking you for joining us today on Plus Politics. I'll see you tomorrow. Have a good evening.